Yes. Hello there and praise the Lord. Uh, I want to believe we are doing quite well wherever we are at home and uh, the Lord has been good to you and your families. He has preserved you. He has kept you well. He has kept you safe and we really glory in him for the life that he has given us and also for the grace that he has bestowed upon us at such a time when uh, there is so much tension all over the world. Uh, it is such a great privilege to once again uh, be found under his feet, uh, to express our worship before him, to pour our hearts uh, to him and uh, express our gratitude, uh, declaring his goodness and uh, his mighty works among men. And uh, indeed we are serving a great God. Uh, let us pray even as uh, we start sharing the word today. Father, we thank you and we glorify your name as such a beautiful day that the Lord, you have enabled us to be found in your presence, to worship you, to exalt you, and to express our gratitude to you because of who you are and because of what you've done in our lives, O King of Glory. Even as we prepare to listen from you, we surrender our hearts before you, and our minds, and our souls, Lord, that we may deposit in them what you've prepared for us such a day. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen. You're much welcome to join me in the sharing today. And... Uh, it will be beneficial, it will be of uh, help to our souls and our spirits, and you are much welcome. Uh -huh. So the topic of this morning is uh, prosperity gospel, prosperity gospel, and um, over the years, uh, th there has been quite a number of controversies arising facing the gospel the true gospel of, of jesus christ and because many of believers many of them who call themselves christians are thought of are believed to be uh, shallow to be uh, not so much rooted in the word to be less established in the key principles of christianity and therefore uh, this has seemed to has seen to it a number of controversies arising facing uh, the true gospel of Christ. And people have been challenging it, saying that, uh, questioning quite a number of things about even the validity of the world, the, the, the validity of the word of, of God, the validity of the gospel, the validity of our faith that we profess. And so, uh, during the times of Paul in, in the church where Timothy was uh, pastoring, there was quite a number of issues uh, arising as well. Uh, the same issues that we are seeing today about um, uh, about faith, about uh, quite a lot. And and Paul writes to Timothy in First Timothy chapter six verse one uh, up to five, and is addressing a, a very serious issue that was arising among us, the believers. And listen to what Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, um, chapter 6, verses 1 up to 5. Uh, Let all who are under a yoke as bond servants regard their own masters as teachers. Uh, I'll begin from verse 3. <clears throat> of the same chapter 6 of First Timothy. Uh, if anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of the Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with the whole with godliness, he is puffed up with the conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for the controversy and quarrels about words which produce envy dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. Um, 
there was some uh, strife, some some friction in that church, and Paul was addressing it. People were pursuing some other things away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ, away from what Paul had taught them. And so uh, he was addressing them and telling them, uh, telling Timothy to, to, to avoid such people, such uh, who call themselves uh, preachers of the word, who are deviating from the true gospel of Jesus Christ and pursuing other things, taking salvation, taking godliness, taking this gift of grace as a means of, uh, of gaining, a means of personal uh, gains, a means of uh, acquiring some things for themselves and not for the edification of, of the body of, of, of Jesus Christ. And so um, uh, people are deviating, as I had said, uh, from the true gospel of Jesus Christ, from the sound doctrine, and they pursued other uh, other things in, in the name of we are preaching the word, we are preaching the gospel. And this is so much a sin today in our current generation that the word of Jesus Christ is being uh, set aside and people are coming up with quite a number of, of, of things, quite a number of, of topics which are uh, coined around uh, and uh, appearing to be godly, appearing to, 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 to be packed with godly messages, but they are not really carrying the uh, message of Jesus Christ. They are not really according to the uh, message of the cross. They are not ascribing to the true faith that you and I are ascribing to. And uh, uh, such issues has led to um, a, a, a gospel arising in our current generation, a type of gospel that has come up so famous and it is so much celebrated in our contemporary world. And this is prosperity gospel. It is prosperity gospel. Um, the first time I heard about prosperity gospel, I was so much interested to know um, the origin of this prosperity gospel. And so when I was digging deep into this, I realized that some two men in around 1930s uh, uh, had a, a clear vision, a clear mind. They actually did not see uh, the, pro the, 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 the so-called prosperity gospel being called prosperity gospel today. Because they had it in mind that people receive healing, people receive miracles, and, and quite uh, a number of issues in, in the lives of those people who are in darkness being addressed by them responding to the word of God, which is not the case today. Because uh, the way we define, the way we understand, and the way uh, we know what prosperity gospel is today is not what it was is not the intended meaning uh, of the people who are the first pioneers of such kind of a gospel. And it is so much propagated, it is so much spreading, it is so much seated in our hearts that sometimes we, we, we are so silent, we don't even know that this is prosperity gospel. We have fallen uh, victims of the same uh, with or without our knowledge. We can't even tell which is the true gospel and which is a prosperity gospel. Now, perhaps we, we should take a minute and uh, think through uh, prosperity gospel. What is prosperity gospel? What is prosperity gospel? And... Uh, Maybe you may be tempted to think that this is a, uh, the, the, the 21st century generation uh, uh, gospel which has come up due to uh, people pursuing some personal interest uh, uh, alongside the word of God. But no, uh, it started long time ago. When you uh, read in, um, in uh, Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses... 18 up to 23. This is what the Bible says. And uh, uh, now, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, 
so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right with God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are in the fall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. So there was a man called Simon. And when Simon saw that these two apostles were laying hands on people and praying for them, and these people were receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, and miracles were happening in their lives, this man named Paul, named Simon, was envious of this gift that uh, Paul uh, possessed, and so uh, and Peter, and so he went to them, he confronted them, and asked them, "Can you uh, give me this power so that I can also lay hands on people, and they receive what they are receiving as you are laying hands on on them?" And 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 Simon offered uh, to give them some money, silver, and you know. Uh, he's being told that may you perish with your silver because your heart, your intentions are not genuine. Your intentions are not genuine. So this man wants to buy the spiritual blessings which are which cannot be bought, which are given and uh, are blessed. They, they are placed upon us by God Himself. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the power to work miracles, they are placed upon us. They are. Uh, they are originated from God himself. And therefore, we, we cannot pay for anything. We cannot give someone something, uh, whether service, whether money, whether whatever you want to, to, to say, that uh, so that you can receive such a gift like Simon. And therefore, uh, uh, the pro pros prosperity gospel can also be be called simony gospel it is simony gospel because we see people trying to uh, make money make personal gains from uh, from the gospel from the uh, power from the working of, of the holy spirit uh, through miracles performing uh, some extraordinary um, acts in the name of the gospel what is prosperity gospel? Prosperity gospel uh, is the belief that God wants people to be rich, that God wants people to be prosperous, especially financially, that uh, God wants everyone, every human being to be wealthy, to be endowed with riches, to be endowed with good health, to be endowed with a uh, good mental uh, wellness, mental stability. You know, it is a doctrine that affirms our wealth as a sign of uh, blessings from God. It is a doctrine that uh, assures man that the only way for you to be sure that the Lord has blessed you, that the Lord loves you, and that the Lord is in your life, is by sh uh, having a wealth, having money, having uh, quite a number of things. I, actually, it is it is a doctrine that insists on success as a sure blessing of God upon your life, and therefore it, it rejects the fact that somebody can be poor, and so the poor are portrayed to be poor because of their lack of faith, and so they they they, they are doing nothing for them to be rich. And that simply tells us that this is a doctrine that uh, uh, embraces the rich and, and rejects the poor. The poor have no, have, have no voice in this kind of doctrine. They have no part. They are actually locked out. It is the gospel that emphasizes on uh, material blessings more than spiritual blessings. That uh, we are on earth so that we can enjoy these things. We are on earth to own uh, money, to own wealth, to own riches, to own cars, to own big mansions. 
a doctrine that emphasizes on material blessings at the expense of the spiritual blessings which are eternal, which are of uh, key importance in the life of a man. And prosperity gospel and is um is a gospel that um seeks to 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 to, to make merchandise of the gospel of Christ. Uh, it is a, like a business, a transactional business, where um, people are making money from the word of God. It is so sad to hear that, but that is very true. Uh, because we see every new day, uh, people are selling spiritual gifts. We have something called prophecy on demand. You come, uh, somebody is seated there, is waiting for you to pay so that they can prophesy over your life. So you, you give whatever you have. You give your farm, you give your, your mansion, you give your car, you give some money, you write some check, and the valuable possessions you have, you pay there, and then they prophesy over your life. That is so heretical, because that is not how God gives prophecies to us. God does not prophesy on demand. He, his prophecies just come. You know, we, we, we cannot induce, we cannot influence the prophecies from God by doing anything, by like paying for it. Prosperity gospel. And we see these things in our environment. We see them in our magazines, in television, in our radio stations, in our society, and perhaps in our churches. So sad to say, this is a doctrine that teaches multitudes to literally give God, you know, to give God so that God can give them. It is like an exchange, uh, a program where you give God 10 cows and he gives you a 20 cows. You give God 100,000 shillings and he gives you 200,000 shillings. So uh, it, it, it is manipulating God. You know, God is a means to an end uh, that if you don't give God something, he cannot give you anything. If you don't give God money, he cannot give you money. If you don't give God your car, he will not bless you with another car. And this is what is being propagated in our generation. Uh, and uh, as I had said earlier, it is a gospel that uh, teaches man to, to bribe God, to bribe God. With or without your knowledge, we are taught to bribe God. You know, uh, it, it portrays God as a... a as, as, as a, a channel, a medium through which we, we, we receive our, our wealth. You know, it is a pathway to prosperity that if you receive Christ in your life, then be assured that you will be blessed with wealth. You are, sure, you are assured that you will be blessed with good health. Uh, you are assured that you will never lack in this life. You will never be poor in any case. You know, and therefore those people who don't know Christ, those people who are still in darkness, and perhaps they are struggling with quite a number of issues, and when they hear such messages, they say that I want that Jesus Christ so that I can be blessed. You know, Christ is not being portrayed as a, a savior, as a as a redeemer of the world, as a healer of sins, uh, as someone, a man, a God who is interested in the hearts of men, a God who is interested in our afterlife, a God who is interested in our personal relationship with him. But rather, this uh, gospel portrays Christ as a pathway to prosperity. And therefore today we have so many people in, in the church who are Christians, not because 
they encountered with the true power of the gospel, power unto salvation, as it is put in, in Philippians chapter 1 verse 16. But people are in church because they were told that if you come to Christ, you will never be sick. If you come to Christ, you will never have any mental issues. If you come to Christ, you will be rich, you will be prosperous, you will be wealthy, you will be famous. Even the whole world will bow to you. And so our commitment uh, to pursue righteousness and pursue holiness and understand God is not based on our understanding and knowledge of him as a savior of the world, of him as our redeemer, as, as, as a God who is interested in our spiritual blessings, but rather our view and our perspective of God is a, a God who will bless us, who will enrich us with material blessings right here on earth. Prosperity gospel. Uh, a group of youth one day uh, lamented that we are tired of a church who we, a church that is only interested in our finances uh, leaving the pulpit uh, full of money full of notes but our souls and our spirits empty you know that is a reality encountered by the spiritual man who seeks a true fellowship with God in, in such an environment are polluted by prosperity gospel where the spiritual needs of man are not attended to they are not addressed the deeper things that really matter are not attended to it pains it pains a generation of young believers who are only interested in our finances and not interested in the key issues of our hearts, in the key issues of our souls. Our prosperity gospel majorly emphasizes on the material gifts it uh, majorly emphasizes on, on creation more than the creator, uh, the giver. The giver is set aside. Jesus, the work of the cross, uh, God, the creator of heaven and earth, they are set aside. And so uh, we, we, we embrace creation. We embrace material gifts. We embrace we, we embrace what we want. We embrace what we can feel and touch. And you know, the, 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 what really matters is not uh, the material blessings. It is the one who gives the material blessings. It is teaching the world uh, to know the one who gives the, the source of these material blessings. But uh, that is the opposite of what is happening. We are being taught to, to pursue and grasp and own as much as we can. And in fact, we are being assured that as a child of God, you cannot lack, you cannot be sick, you cannot be poor, you cannot, you know, you cannot, you cannot. You only need to be. Creation, material gifts are exalted. They are given higher priority. And this robs us of our uh, uh, our reality in, in Christ Jesus, our true identity in Christ Jesus. We have lost the understanding of who we are in, in Christ Jesus. We don't know exactly what we are in him because the pursuit of material blessings has been exalted more than the pursuit of of spiritual blessing a prosperity gospel is just another gospel away from the true gospel it emphasizes on being well being wealthy being rich 
being famous you know having doing just fine in everything success is all that prosperity gospel champions for uh, wellness of your health wellness of your mind wellness of your soul wellness of your you, you, you are everything possession your family it insists that god wants you to be rich Prosperity gospel uh, portrays prayer as a tool, as a force that attracts God to bring uh, prosperity in the lives of men and in the lives of those who have faith. Prosperity gospel. Now that we know what prosperity gospel is, what therefore? Uh, are the marks of true gospel the marks of true gospel true gospel uh, is the gospel that Christ taught it is a gospel that accords with the words of Christ Christ it agrees uh, with what Christ our Lord said uh, it is a gospel that accords with the holiness True gospel uh, teaches man to obey God and to align his will uh, to God's will. It is a gospel that points man to the cross. It points man to Christ. It doesn't point man to wealth. It doesn't point man to a prosperity, to material blessings here on earth. It points man to the work and the great sacrifice that was accomplished on the cross a true gospel as the bible as the most authoritative uh, uh, reference material we see some marks of the uh, prosperity gospel having uh, uh, some other books alongside the bible as the ma the, the, the authoritative some authority authoritative reference materials that if you don't buy this book you will never be blessed we only have the bible as our only and infallible authoritative reference material uh, it bears the hope it has the assurance of eternal inheritance lastly a true gospel um, edifies the spiritual man bringing him closer uh, to god for spiritual gains it connects us to god it draws us our uh, away from uh, the, the the world it uh, snatches away our minds it draws us to jesus christ it points us to a, a closer and intimate relationship with god and therefore a true gospel uh, exalts spiritual blessings more than material blessings because it is spiritual blessings that really matter at the end of it all it is spiritual blessings that really matter really matter ex e e eternal inheritance that really matters more than the temporary earthly inheritance that we can enjoy for a short period of time at the expense of the afterlife forms of prosperity gospel and we can name a number because um, uh, in one way or another after understanding the marks of a prosperity gospel you may have in a way uh, fallen victim of this prosperity gospel with or without your knowledge uh, um, we've come across uh, quite a number of, uh, of men and women uh, insisting of kupanda mbegu, kupanda mbegu uh, so that you give so that you be blessed if you don't give 
you are not blessed. You give so that you receive. If you don't give, you don't receive. But my question is, what about... Uh, what is the Bible saying about this? Uh, what about them who have nothing to give, who have no money? You've told them to give this figure. They don't have that figure. What is their place in the Bible? There is a certain woman who gave uh, one coin, and that is all she had. And Jesus tells that this woman has given a more than anyone else. Prosperity gospel. We've had people selling the gifts of the Holy Spirit and power to heal, power to perform miracles, power to do prophecy. And so you, you, you give some cash and you're given this gift. And many men are, are running for that without knowledge that these gifts are given by God, by the Holy Spirit himself. And not man, I cannot sell to you such a gift. It is God who does it. It is God who blesses us with these gifts. Uh, we've had people saying that if you want to break some things in your life, some struggles, some curses, if you want to rise above certain limits in your lives and families, then you have to buy this book. You have to buy this book. If you don't buy this book, uh, you, are, you are doomed. You will not overcome whatever you want to overcome in your life. That is prosperity gospel. We've heard people saying that if you don't buy this book and if you're struggling with something in your life, probably maybe it could be prayer, it could be a certain altar or foundation in your working, in your family. So if you don't buy this book, I am the author, then you may never arise beyond whatever you're struggling with. That is prosperity gospel. It is prosperity gospel. We've had people uh, insisting that pain, suffering, uh, sorrows, and poverty, lack, uh, is a sign of sin in the lives of men. In the lives of men. Which is not true. Which is not true. What is the will of God in your situations, in your circumstances? What is the will of God in your circumstances? So, uh, that means that if you're not prosperous, if you're not healthy, if you're not wealthy, if you're poor, if you are um, uh, having any, a, a, any struggles, any terminal illness, then the Lord is not in your life. The Lord um, is not pleased with you. No, that, 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 that the Lord is only pleased with them that are doing well, with them that are prosperous, with them that have a good self-image, with them that the world knows about them, them that are famous, them that have a voice. Allow me to uh, briefly... Uh, touch on the effects of prosperity gospel in the church today and then I'll be done with the sharing today. Uh, the first effect is that man is uh, deprived of the spiritual blessings in pursuit of wealth. Uh, we have said that our attention is our, our, our focus is shifted from the true word of God. Our focus is shifted from the work of the cross, from the sacrifice given, made on Calvary. And our focus is now directed to the pursuit of wealth and earthly inheritance. It renders man deprived of the spiritual blessings. 
it leads to strife and competition among its church members because everyone is now pursuing this well who is more richer than the other strife and competition if you're not getting richer any faster then you will be frustrated you will be stressed for nothing uh, the weightier matters of the gospel are ignored the weightier matters of the law of god are ignored uh, issues like sin righteousness holiness and bearing of fruits by christians are ignored because they are never emphasized emphasis has shifted to earthly blessings more than the weightier matters of the gospel the the, the work of the of the cross is overlooked is diminished man becomes insensitive to the convictions of the holy spirit because we are not deeply rooted we are not established we are not taught to know god we are not trained to understand uh, the voice of god to understand the working of the holy spirit the spiritual needs are not addressed and as i had told you earlier that a group of youth are heard somewhere complaining that i've come to this church for quite a number of times but uh, they are only interested in my pocket in my finances my spiritual blessings i've got a i've got a hunger in me no the spiritual emptiness of my soul is not being addressed and so i will remain empty uh, human beings perspective of of god is diminished it is we have a blood image of who god is we don't know god as a father we don't know him as the creator of heaven and earth we don't know god as the uh, the orchestrator of of salvation we see him as a, a like a channel to receive the earthly possessions that is so sad christians are not prepared to endure the realities of why they are called christians man is not prepared to face and endure battle and overcome the realities of christianity man is not prepared for the afterlife and this renders um, many christians today very very hopeless very very weak not sure even of their own faith in god why because the spiritual issues that really matter to them were not addressed by the gospel prosperity gospel the result of this is a generation of men and women who are less rooted and less built up in christ no these are the generation which don't know who god is which don't know who jesus is the other day i heard someone say that god doesn't exist you know god doesn't exist but if men and women today would preach the gospel that was preached by paul by peter you know during that day of pentecost a gospel that point people to the cross then uh today we will not be perhaps hearing people saying that there is no god but if we keep on deviating from the true gospel of jesus christ a gospel that addresses the issues of the soul of man the heart of man and pointing people to christ pointing people to to to, to salvation to the cross then we will not have such controversies going on and as i finish 
this is a great call to us. It is a call to faithful pro proclamation of the word of God as it has been given to us. The message of the cross, the message of salvation, the message, the message that saves mankind, that saves them who are deeply rooted in some struggles, them who are deeply rooted in, in wickedness. We are called to a faithful pro pro proclamation of the word of God without compromise, without the mindset of making gains of it, without the intentions of making merchandise of it, of making wealth out of it. You know, that is what God wants us to do. God is not interested in us getting wealth from his gospel. He is our father. He will bless us, yes. But that should not be the aim of us coming uh, to him so that we may be blessed. We may be, you know, we may possess uh, earthly blessings because uh, he intends uh, that we get to know him more. We, we, we get to grow in him. And this, you know, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 33, that, you know, seek God and his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So what matters is, you know, the understanding of the principles of the kingdom of God. It is the understanding of the spiritual blessings, the state of our souls, the state of our hearts. And then uh, whatever is being pursued, the Lord will, uh, will grant us, will grant us so that we can also uh, enjoy them. As, as Paul tells Timothy, I want you to take a minute and think through. Perhaps you've been a victim uh, propagating this kind of gospel. The Lord is calling us to faithful pro proclamation of the gospel that leads to eternal life, of the gospel which is not corrupted, of a gospel which is not deviating away from the gospel that was given to us, from the gospel that connects us with him, a gospel that leads to eternal life and eternal inheritance, eternal union with him. God is calling us to this. And uh, I pray that even as we grow in him, getting rooted and built up in him, the Lord will enable us to avoid any attempt to propagate prosperity gospel because this is a greatest danger in the kingdom of God. Men and women are shifting their attention from what really matters, from the grave issues of this life, uh, holiness, righteousness, and their pursuit is after uh, the temporary blessings of this earth which will not last, which will not guarantee us eternal inheritance, eternal life. Let us believe as we pray. Father, we thank you and we glorify your name. You are worthy to be lifted, high Father. We worship you today. We come before you just as we are, that Lord, may you search our hearts, Lord, any attempt to further propagate what is not your will, we pray that you may pardon us today and empower us, Jesus, to further teach your word. Proclaim the good news, Lord, as you intended to be proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ. The gospel that leads men to you, points them to you, connecting them to the spiritual blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father. Have your way, Jesus. Help us, Father, not to fall victims of this kind of gospel today. And this is our prayer of faith in Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that you may established among us, men and women, ladies and gentlemen, who will further pursue your will in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord, whatever may come 
they will not compromise your word but rather they will stand up for truth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O God. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. We pray and believe. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Keep self and keep pursuing his will. In Jesus' name. Amen.